Good morning, dear students, and uh, welcome to our very first uh, lecture uh, of Science B, your chapter number six, classification of plants. Uh, last year, in the eighth standard, uh, we studied about a little bit of the introduction to classification. Uh, you all learned about uh, Robert Whitaker, who introduced the five kingdom classification system. Uh, and last year, you all learned about uh, protista, fungi, algae. Okay. Uh, this year, we will go a little further and we will be learning about classification of plants. And in the next year, in the 10th standard, you all will be learning about classification of animals. Okay, so first of all, uh, to uh, begin with, why is classification of plants required? As you all know, we have a huge diversity of plants present on the earth. We have many, many, many different varieties of plants present on the earth. Now, out of these plants, some plants can be used for medical purposes for human beings, for the betterment of man mankind. Uh, scientists study these plants. They derive useful substances from these plants and they make useful medicines for plants. Not only for uh, mankind, not only for humans, uh, these medicines can also be used for birds, for animals and for a variety of other purposes. You, you have cosmetics which are made from uh, plants. Uh, you have plants which are used uh, for a variety of reasons. Okay. So, uh, when scientists have to make uh, a study, have to research these plants, now it is not uh, very, you know, it's not very friendly to say that the scientists can very easily make a study or uh, have a study of all these huge variety of plants. It's very difficult because the number of plants present on the earth is, uh, is very vast, okay. So, uh, to make that study a little simple, uh, Whitaker introduced the uh, method of classification wherein plants are classified based on their similarities and dissimilarities. Whichever plants are similar are categorized under one particular category. Whichever plants are having different characteristics or different properties, they will be put under separate categories. So that is exactly what we will be learning right now in classification of plants. So let's begin. Uh, this is something that you have already learned last year, your five kingdom classification which was uh, made known by uh, Robert Whitaker. Uh, he said that your uh, all the living organisms which are present on the earth can be divided under five main categories which are plantae which includes all the plants, fungi which includes the saprophytic organisms, protista which includes the organisms which may be unicellular or multicellular, Monera, which includes the very uh, prehistoric kind or the very simple type of cells, prokaryotic cells, and Animalia, which includes your animals. Now, out of this, Fungi, Protista, Monera, these three have already been covered in 8th standard. This Plantea, this is what you will be covering in the 9th standard this year, and Animalia is what you will be covering in the 10th standard. Now, what is the basis of classification? How exactly are plants classified? How are they put into different categories? As I told you some time ago, plants are put into different categories based on whether they are similar to each other or whether they are different from each other. Uh, we have six categories or six uh, important properties based on which plants are classified. The first one is organs. We, uh, the, we looked into the fact whether the plant has root, stem, leaves, flowers. Are all these organs present on the plant? Okay. Are they present or are they not present? If they are present, they will be categorized under one particular category. If it is not present, it will be put into another category. Separate conducting tissues. Uh, you have heard about xylem and phloem. Xylem and phloem are two types of tissues which are present in plants. Xylem is what is required for the plant to absorb water and phloem is what is required by the plant to absorb food materials, to absorb nutrition. So is xylem and phloem present in the plant? If it is not present then 
the categories of the plants will be different next flowers is the plant producing flowers is it able to produce flowers or is it a non flowering plant so this is also one important category for classification fruits now if flowers are produced is that plant able to produce fruits or is it a plant which only gives flowers does not give any fruits that is also one important category the next category is seeds if you look at the seeds are the seeds present inside the fruit or are the seeds present outside the fruit uh, if you uh, know your mango the mango has that big seed which is present inside your fruit but what about a strawberry you see those tiny uh, prickly white things which are present on a strawberry in the strawberry those are the seeds which are present outside the fruit okay so when it comes to seed is the seed present inside the fruit or is it present outside the fruit that also becomes a category for classification and the last one the number of cotyledons now what is cotyledons uh, when you plant a seed into the soil okay and the seed begins to germinate the seed begins to grow at that time your seed will either break open into one single part it will remain as one part or it will break open into two parts if it break opens into two parts then those type of plants are called as dicotyledonous means it has two cotyledons if the plant if the seed just remains as one single uh, part then it is called as monocotyledon which means it has only one cotyledon so uh, based on those different categories that i just spoke about those six different categories you have your plant kingdom or the plantea the plantea is divided into cryptogam and phanerogam okay cryptogam is further divided into thallophyta bryophyta and pteridophyta phanerogam is further divided into gymnosperms and angiosperms and these angiosperms are further divided into monocot and dicot okay we will repeat it once again your plant kingdom is divided into cryptogam and phanerogam cryptogam is further divided into thallophyta bryophyta pteridophyta phanerogam is divided into gymnosperms and angiosperms and angiosperms is divided into monocot and dicot okay i want you to make a note of this chart and learn it by heart now we will learn each of those categories that we had mentioned in the chart the first one cryptogams uh this one are uh, these are all examples which are uh, there for cryptogams this plant is called as a pulva this is called as chara and this is pyrogera now the plants which are present in this category they do not bear flowers you don't see any flowers present on that plant they reproduce through spores there is a special uh, kind of a material which is generated by these plant that's called that's called as spores and these spores help in the formation of a new plant they need moist environment for survival these plants cryptogams they need moisture for survival if the environment is very very dry they will die and disintegrate the next category thallophyta these this is a diagram of a spiral uh in this you see that the plants are aquatic it it may be fresh fresh water or saline water the plants are found in aquatic conditions they are found inside water and uh, it can be found either in saline water in fresh water or in salt water in this plant roots stem and leaves are absent you do not see separate separate organs wherein you can say that this is root this is stem this is leaves no that is not present in these plants they are autotrophic you see in the plants it is green in color which means that chlorophyll is present in this plants so if chlorophyll is present it means that it can prepare its own food using the process of photosynthesis 
so such plants are autotrophic unicellular or multicellular these plants can either be unicellular present as one single cell or they can be multicellular wherein you have a lot of cells present inside it is soft and fiber like body the body of the plant is very soft and if you touch it you feel like you are touching a very soft fibrous substance examples ulva chara pyramida now bryophyta the next part bryophyta they are called as the amphibians of the plant kingdom uh, you all know what an amphibian is an amphibian is an organism which can stay in water as well as on land examples are frogs frogs can swim in water as well as they can stay on land crocodiles crocodiles can live in water as well as on land okay similarly bryophyta are called as the amphibians of the plant kingdom among the plants bryophyta are considered as amphibians why it is so because amphibians or sorry because bryophyta they need land for growing they grow on land but when they have to reproduce when they have to produce new organisms at that point of time they require water okay so that is why bryophyta are called as the amphibians of the plant kingdom the structure of the bryophyta it is thalloid means the structure is very flat if you see correctly the structure of thalloidita is very flat in nature so that's called as a thalloid it is multicellular it is made up of more than one cells autotrophic you see the green color so it means that it is having chlorophyll if it is having chlorophyll it can prepare its own food using photosynthesis and then it is called as autotrophic reproduction is by spore formation again over here also spores are used which help in the in the process of uh, reproduction the body is flat ribbon like and long okay it can be in the form of ribbon or it can be in the form of a flat structure roots stem leaves are absent you do not have anything in it which can be said which can be called as root stem leaf if you look at this picture you cannot say that this is a stem it is not a stem it is just a stalk like thing which is present in it it does not have a specific root stem or leaf examples of uh, bryophyta are moss rixia and mercantia next you have pteridophyta pteridophyta in pteridophyta you have well defined roots stems and leaves in pteridophyta you can actually see the roots the stems and the leaves separate tissues for conducting water and food in these plants xylem and phloem are present zygote formation or spore formation reproduction can take place sexually wherein a zygote is formed and a new plant is formed or it can happen asexually by spore formation fruits and flowers are absent these plants do not contain flowers do not contain any fruits for example nephrolepis equisetum nephrolepis uh, this picture is of a nephrolepis it is a very common uh, a fern which is uh, usually grown as an ornamental plant either in uh, hanging pots or in gardens you must have seen fern it looks very beautiful then you have phanerogams seeds are produced now in phanerogam you have seeds which are produced the seeds contain embryo and food inside the seed you have an embryo which forms the new plant and you have food material which is stored inside the seed for the embryo to grow the seed may or may not be enclosed in a fruit the seed which is present in this plant it can be inside the fruit or it can be outside the fruit this is an example which you must have seen in gardens it is a cycas and uh, this is an example of a pine tree the next one gymnosperms uh the characteristics or the properties of a gymnosperm it is evergreen the plant remains green throughout the year okay the plants never the the leaves never dry up and uh, fall off but they remain evergreen 
the structure of the plant is woody if you look at this particular structure it looks very woody made of a wood and looks very hard it's perennial it's there it grows throughout the entire year the stem are without branches the stem does not have branches it is one single stem which grows and then you have a lot of leaves which are growing on the stem it does not have branches leaves form a crown at the top of your uh, plant for example if you see a coconut tree at the top you have the leaves which come out which looks like a crown which is kept on the top of the head of the coconut tree in the same way if you look at the picture behind okay you see this the leaves form a crown it forms a nice round structure at the top of the head of the plant so it is said that the leaves form a crown male and female flowers are present on different porosities of the same plant the male flowers and the female flowers of the plant are present on two different structures on the same plant those structures are called as porosities the seeds are not enclosed in the fruit in uh, in gymnosperms the seeds are present outside the fruit it does not have a fruit which is uh, covering the seed for example cypress tithia pinus and thuja angiosperms angiosperms are uh, most of the plants that we see in uh, our uh, gardens and all are mostly uh, grouped under angiosperms these uh, in these plants flowers are the reproductive organs the flowers help in the process of reproduction flowers develop into fruits it is the flowers which mature and later on develop into the fruit of the plant the seeds are covered by the fruit in in angiosperms the seeds are covered by the fruit the seed is present inside the fruit further it can be classified as monopod and dicot if we have to study it further it can be divided as monopod and dicot plants examples are hibiscus shoe flower mango bamboo onion etc all these come under angiosperms Okay, so now what is monocot and dicot? What we were talking about monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous. A uh, monocot contains a single cotyledon. When the seed germinates, it will remain as one single piece. It will not break open. But a dicot, it has two cotyledons. So when the seed germinates and the seed breaks open, you will get it divided into two parts. If you look at the leaves of a uh, monocot, the leaves are very narrow and long. You remember, uh, you you must have seen uh, the leaves of a coconut tree. Okay, the leaves are very long and very narrow. It's not broad. It's very narrow. Uh, in dicot, the leaves are broad. The leaves are flat and very huge, very broad. Uh, in a uh, monocot, the leaves have parallel veins if you look at your uh, coconut tree uh, and uh, if you look at your banana leaf okay if you try to uh, break or if you try to, you can see if you try to tear your leaf your leaf will always tear in a straight single line if you consider a banana leaf or if you consider a coconut leaf when you try to tear the leaf it will tear very nicely into straight bits the same does not happen in dicot if you take any other broad leaf for example if you take a leaf of a shoe flower and you try to tear it what will happen it will not tear in a single straight line you will get all the curvy edges okay that is because in monocot you have parallel veins the lines which are present on the leaf are in a parallel formation and over here you have a network of veins it's called as reticulate venation it forms a web kind of a structure then over here in monocot your vascular bundles are scattered the vascular bundles are the uh, the xylem and the phloem it is scattered everywhere if you take a section of the leaf and uh, if you take a section of the plant and uh, of the stem and observe it under a microscope you will see that the xylem and the phloem are spread out everywhere in the cell but if you look at the cell of the stem of a dicot you will see that the vascular bundles 
are arranged in a proper ring formation. Flowers in monocots, your flowers are in multiples of three. If you look at the petals of the flowers, uh, monocot will have petals like three petals, six petals, nine petals, twelve petals, all in multiples of three. But dicots will have in multiples of four and five. Okay, it will be either four, eight, twelve like that, or it might be five, ten, fifteen, twenty. So uh, here the flowers are in multiples of three, so they are called as trimerous. And over here they are in uh, multiples of four, they can be called as uh, quadrumerous, or it is in multiples of five, which is pentamerous. And finally, uh, what is the main difference? Just by looking at that, you can tell whether your plant is a monocot or a dicot. Uh, your monocot plants have a fibrous root system, and your uh, dicot plants have a taproot system. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this particular chapter. I will be sharing with you the uh, question answers. You can go through the uh, chapter, read the chapter very well, uh, practice the diagrams. And uh, in one or two days, I'll send you the answers, I'll send you the notes, and you can study them. And very soon, we'll be having a test for this particular chapter. So, till then, have a nice day. Take care of yourself. Stay safe. Bye.